Shalom on brothers and sisters and once again we are back with part 2 dealing with Revelation the 11th chapter okay we're back with part 2 and um, dealing with Revelation the 11th chapter concerning the uh, two witnesses and we're going to pick off on verse 3 okay all praises and glorification to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai uh, we thank you we want to say the water Yahweh Hamashah Yahweh Shai thank you for this truth Verse 3, let's get into it. This is Brother Brandon Judah Matt Duffy, brothers and sisters, bringing you another edition, part 2, concerning Revelation, the 11th chapter, dealing with the two witnesses, part 2. So let's get into it. Let's look at where we left off. I think in part 1, we left off on part 3, so we'll start from right here. It says, And I will give power to my two witnesses, they shall prophesy. 8,203 score days clothed in sackcloth. That's 1,203 score days and 350 years, approximately 400 years, brothers and sisters, that we that we may proclaim the message and the righteousness of the Most High. That's why you see the brothers and sisters that's out by the hedges and the highways and the byways. All right. Um, the two witnesses, keep in mind, are the two uh, kingdoms of Israel, the southern kingdom right here and the northern kingdom. Let's not forget that, the two witnesses. We're going to give you a precept to show you that the two witnesses basically is the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom, Judah and Samaria, which, uh, which is the whole house of Israel when you put them both kingdoms together. Um, let's look at a precept concerning the two witnesses, Revelation 11 and 3. Um... Let's take a look at uh uh let's what's what's a good precept? I'm gonna get a good one. I'm gonna get a good one. Uh let's take a look at Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43rd chapter. And we'll begin with the first verse. Dealing with the two two uh witnesses. Isaiah 43 and 1. But now thus said the Lord Jehovah that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. So the Most High is clearly stating here that uh, he created the old Jacob. Now Jacob is Israel. And he that formed thee. O Israel. Fear not. For I have redeemed thee. And I have called you. Basically thee. By your name. And the Mosai tells us that. O Jacob. Which is Israel. Pursuing Isaiah 43 and 1. He says. Thou art mine. Okay. So he's talking about Israel belongs to him. Jacob belongs to the Most High. Not any other nation on the earth. Okay. But Israel, which are you modern day blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. You are the Most High's people. Okay. You other heathens, which is from 2 to 18. You heathens, you are not the Most High's people. You are not. All right, but once again, Israel are the Most High's people. American Negroes, West Indians, Haitians, Dominicans, so forth. You can you can pause the video to just get a a longer view at this display right here, dealing with the twelve tribes of all of Israel. The people on this sign are the Most High's. Pursuant to Isaiah forty three and one, he says, "Thou art mine." O Israel, O Jacob. Okay, and I skip down to verse 3. For I am the Lord thy God, thy is your. So he says that I am the Lord thy God, Israel, basically, basically blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, black man, black woman, Hispanic man, Hispanic woman, and Native American man, Native American woman. The Most High says that I am the Lord your God. The Holy One of Israel. So he's the God of Israel only. He's not the God of 
these other Gentile nations, which is from 2 to 18. He's only the God of number one, brothers and sisters. That's why it's everything to be black, so-called Negro descent, and Hispanic or Latino descent. If you're in that category, you are everything, brothers and sisters. Don't let no one tell you different. It's amazing to be of Negro ending in descent because that makes you the chosen people. Uh, in pursuing Isaiah 43 and 3, he says that the Holy One of Israel, the Most High is the Holy One of Israel. He's the ho Holy One of you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. He says, Thy Savior, the Most High is your Savior. He said, I gave Egypt for thy ransom. Yeah, because we were slaves during the time of Exodus under the hands of the Egyptians, which are Northeast Africans. We were in Egypt and we served 430 years in Egypt. We served slavery. So the most I say, I gave Israel, I gave Egypt for thy ransom. Ethiopia, which is Babylon, Samaria, okay, when we was in the Babylonian captivity for 40 years, I meant those uh, approximately 70 years, when we was in the Babylonian captivity, the most I gave you also over to the Babylonians and Sab Saba. Sabians are relatives to the Ethiopians. Which are basically Africans for thee. Now, this is the main thing we want to focus on. Let's skip down to verse 10, dealing with these two witnesses that uh, Revelation 11 chapter is highlighting on. It says in Isaiah 43rd chapter, brothers and sisters, verse 10, the most I tell you that ye are my witnesses, said the Lord. Who is the most I witnesses? Just go back up. See? To verse 1 and it says this whole thing is talking about Jacob it's talking about Israel so when you go back down to verse 10 it says ye are my witnesses ye are my witnesses said the Lord and my servant whom I have chosen that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he before me there was no God for him. neither shall there be after me so the most I tells you before him there was no God form, neither shall there be any after him. And the most I, he, the, he, this is crystal clear. He tells you that Jacob, Israel are his witnesses. Say the Lord. No other man said this. The most I said this. So that is Isaiah 43 and 10. So when you go back to Revelation chapter uh, 11 verse 3. Now we know who those two witnesses are. Those two witnesses is the Israelites, the 12 tribes of Israel, Judah and Samaria, the southern kingdom, which are the Jews, the northern kingdom, which are the Hispanic tribes. You put all these, you put two of these kingdoms together, and you get the whole house of Israel. And the Most High tells you, pursuant to Isaiah 43 and 10, that you are his witnesses. So you can see who the witnesses are. Uh, in reference to Revelation 11 chapter is you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans you are the most high witnesses and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days that's why you see us out on the streets okay uh, let's see can I give you a a picture of, uh, of me basically um, that's why you see us out on the streets brothers and sisters let's see um, such as this as you see this image right here man as you can see that's uh, in reference to Revelation 11 chapter uh, Revelation 11 verse 3 I will give power to my witnesses and they shall prophesy 1,203 score days basically 350 years approximately 400 years we're going to prophesy on these streets brothers and sisters and we're going to show you who you are according to the Bible we're going to wake up the house of Israel. We're going to wake up you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. We're going to show you your nationality. We're going to teach you the laws, statutes, and commandments. We're going to restore those laws into your hearts. And that is in reference of Revelation 11.3. That how we shall prophesy. As you can see all different types of camps that goes out on the Sabbath day and prophesy. So this prophecy will continue a thousand... 203 score days and we prophesy clothed in sackcloth 
clear with the sackcloth. Sackcloth uh, brings you, puts you in the mind of mourning. Sackcloth, basically garments, old rug garments. All right. Revelation eleven four. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before before the God of the earth. Uh, the two olive trees is in reference also to the two witnesses. The two witnesses is in reference to the two olive trees. These are synonymous. These are synonymous. The two witnesses and the two olive trees. Basically, it's just the same thing as the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom, which makes up the whole entire house of Israel. And I give you a precept to these olive trees. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of earth. So, uh, Jeremiah, the 11th chapter. All right. Uh, we'll start with verse 16. Concerning the two olive trees, Revelation 11.4. We're going to show you. This is Jeremiah... Uh, 11 chapter verse 16 we'll start right here the Lord called thy name a green olive tree you see that a fair and a goodly fruit with the noise of a great tumult he had kindled fire upon it and the branches of it are broken you, let's go down what we're going to focus on right here is the green olive tree because that's in reference to Revelation 11, uh, verse 4, when it speaks of the two olive trees and the two candlesticks. Jeremiah 11 and 17. For the Lord of hosts that planted thee had pronounced evil, evil against you. For the evil of the house of Israel and of the house of Judah. The house of Israel and of the house of Judah. The house of Israel and of the house of Judah. Once again, Israel and Judah are basically the two kingdoms of Israel. When it says the house of Israel, that's the northern kingdom. When it says the house of Judah, that's the southern kingdom. These two kingdoms make up the twelve tribes. See, so Jeremiah 11 and 17, it says the house of Israel. And the house of Judah, which they have done against themselves to provoke me to anger and offering incense to Baal. So you can see, uh, you had wicked Israelites at that time from both kingdoms that was heavy in idol worship and offering incense to Baal. But that's not the that's not the case. That's not what we're focusing on. What we're focusing on is basically the two olive, uh, the two olive trees uh, that Revelation. Chapter 11 verse 4 speaking on as you can see right here in Jeremiah eleven sixteen. 16 go back up right here It says the Lord have called thy name a green olive tree and that refers to the house of Israel and the house of what Judah both kingdoms So you are those olive trees that are revelations 11 Verse 4 speaks about those two olive trees those just the same thing as the two witnesses, which are the two kingdoms of Israel. Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and two candlesticks. Uh, the same thing. Standing standing before God of the earth. Uh, Revelation 11.5 And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth, and devours their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. So, uh... As you can see, you're going to have certain individuals like these uh, pagan, heathenistic, Gentile, non-Israelitish people from 2 to 18 that's going to try to come up against you brothers uh, that's proclaiming this gospel, that's preaching and teaching this truth and sincerity. You will have these heathen nations, so-called whites, white man, Chinese, Japanese, Arabs, East Indians, Africans. Uh, these heathens, they, they they are going to try to come up against you in these streets. They, they're going to think all kinds of ways to have you put to death. Think of all kinds of ways to have you eliminated. So, if any man would do this, basically, any man would try to come against you, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans that's proclaiming God's word and truth and sincerity, 
pursuing a revelation of eleven and five, if any man would hurt them, fire proceeded out of their mouth and devour their enemies. And if any man would hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. So I would think twice about coming against uh, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you heathenistic nations. I would think twice about coming against these people, okay, and putting your mouth on these people because these are the chosen. So, 2 to 18, I would think twice about that. I would really, basically, I would really speculate on that. Because if you try to come against the house of Israel, you can bet your bottom dollar pursuing Revelation 11.4, I mean, excuse me, 11.5, if you would try to do this, fire proceeded out of their mouth and devoured their enemies. And uh, basically, this is twofold because that fire represents that the, 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 the truth that we bring it forth that proceeding out of mouth and devouring. And basically, you be cutting you with the scriptures. All right? It says that if any man will hurt them, he must be in this man to be killed. So we don't fear when we go out in the streets to preach because this verse right here gives us uh, courage and, and strength. All right? And uh, Revelation 11, 6. These have power to shut heaven. Yeah, you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you have that power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. Because some, some days you might want to go out and prophesy. It might be a certain Sabbath that uh, you might be getting some uh, heavy chances of rain. And you can go and take it up with the Heavenly Father, man. Pray to the Heavenly Father to, to uh, ask Him to keep back that rain so you can go out and prophesy, man. And you have that power to shut up the heavens. Uh, just like Elijah had that power. So you blacks and Spanish and Native Americans, you have power to shut up the heaven that it rains not in the days of their prophecy. When you want to be about your father's business, it's a particular Sabbath you want to go out on. You know, you might want to go out on a particular Sabbath and um, really get, try to compel the people to come in. It might be raining that particular day. So what you do, you pray to the Heavenly Father to restrain to keep back the rain. And he would he would do it, man. He just have to be uh truthful and sincere. So you have that power, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, to shut him and then it rain not in the days of their prophecy while you out doing your father's business. And have power over waters to turn them to blood. Because you know Moses had that power. Uh and that's why a lot of people, like I say, the Christian church, they teach that these two witnesses pursuing Revelation eleven chapter. They teach that these two witnesses is uh, Elijah and Moses. And the reason why the Christian church teach these two witnesses are Elijah and Moses. Because, you know, Elijah had power to shut up the heavens. And that it rained not. And Moses had power to uh, turn waters to blood during the days of Exodus when the children of Israel was in that captivity by the Egyptians. Moses turned the wall. Uh, uh, waters in Egypt blood to blood so these two witnesses a lot of Christians believe that these two witnesses are Elijah and Moses but however that's that's somewhat true but it's just not only Elijah and Moses okay it's not only just Elijah and Moses it elaborates on the two witnesses which are the two kingdoms of the um, nation of Israel which are the twelve tribes. So these so that's twofold. So these have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy and have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. Because you know it was plagues that came upon Egypt in the days of uh Exodus. Uh, I, I think Egypt received like ten plagues and you know Babylon is gonna receive plagues. Which is thermonuclear destruction. So uh, let's continue on. It says Revelation 11 and 7. And when they have finished their testimony. The beasts that ascended out the bottomless pit. Shall make war against them. And shall overcome them and kill them. Um, brothers and sisters. That beast that ascended out the bottomless pit. The bottomless pit 
it's Europe. And the reason why Europe is considered the bottomless pit because it has very little uh, mineral resources. All right, so Europe has very little uh, mineral resources, you could say, and, and it's known as the bottomless pit because this beast that ascended out the uh, out the bottomless pit, pursuing Revelation eleven and seven, the beast that came out the uh, the bottomless pit, I want to say is like Great Britain, all right, Great Britain. That is sending out the uh, because America basically is controlled by by British powers, British a uh, British rule. America is another uh, America is a corporation that that is a uh, a British crown colony. So the bottomless pit is related to Europe because it has very little mineral resources, and the beast that is sending out of the bottomless pit is uh, the Great Britain, man. That's why you. That's why you so-called Negroes speak English today. English comes from England, which is located in Britain. Britain. Uh, so that's the beast that is sent out of Europe, and it says basically shall make war with them, and shall overcome them and kill them. And so uh, uh, we can. I'm gonna give you a precept because America came from Great Britain. Like I said, America came from Great Britain. So. That beast that ascended out the bottom of this pit is uh, America. Because it came from Great Britain. I mean, America slash Britain, however you want to put it. America came from Britain. That's just the, the, the main thing. All right. Uh, Daniel 7 and 21. When you look at that, pursuing Revelation 11 and 7. Daniel 7 and 21. All right. Daniel 7 and 21. It says, I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. That horn is the same thing, elaborating with that beast. Um, that horn, uh, let's, let's go back up a little bit. That's right here, Daniel 7, verse 20. And ten horns that were in his head. Those ten horns is NATO. Okay, the uh, those ten horns is NATO, the National Atlantic Atlantic. Treaty organization, or some may say the EU, the European Union, or some may say the uh, European uh, uh, Community. Uh, okay, that's uh, it's none other than NATO. All right, and those ten horns are basically NATO is uh, a conglomerate of different a conglomerate of nations that's trying to help the New World Order form their agenda. So those ten horns reflects on NATO. There was in his head, and the other which came up, and before whom three fell, even though that horn that had eyes and mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows. All this is going back to Revelation uh, 11 and uh, 7, which is uh, the beast that ascended out of that, bo out of that bottomless pit, which is Britain slash America, because America came out of Britain. So, uh, it shall make war against them. Yeah, because the so-called white man is going to come against you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, man, for preaching this truth and sincerity. And it says he shall overcome them and kill them. See? And he did that, man. How? How, he over how did he overcome the so-called Negroes and Hispanics and Native Americans? He overcame you by... Uh, Feeding you false philosophy, traditions, giving you lies, giving you deceit, dumbing you down. Basically, that's how he overcame you, man. He overcame you by uh, giving you uh, false philosophy. He killed you basically twofold because he killed you mentally and also he kills you spiritually. Okay? Kills you spiritually um, by giving you false religions and denomination. He kills you mentally. Uh, in the mind by giving you reverse psychological propaganda and he kills you physically because the so called white man hates you Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Revelation 11 8 and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. So this whole thing is dealing with spiritually wise. That's why I told you this is not a literal physical death, this is a spiritual death when it says he shall overcome and kill them. 
because he took away the truth from the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. He took away the truth. He took away, uh, he took away uh, your biblical names and gave you proverbs and bywords, okay, to separate you from um, your nation, which is Israel. You can look at Psalm 83. That's how uh, he overcome pursuing Revelation 11. That's how he overcame you as well. Psalm 83. All right. Let's look at that. Psalm 83. Uh, this is what David prayed to the Most High about. David had an issue concerning these our enemies, these heathens. It says Psalm 83 and 2, For lo, thy enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. Basically, lifted up their head in pride, man. Because they was proud people for taking us down as the nation, for, for taking us down, for taking the nation of Israel down. When they conquered us and took us down, um, they basically lifted up the head. Psalms 83 and 3, they have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. We seem hidden in the earth, brothers and sisters, because we don't know who we are according to the Bible. We are known as the lost tribes of Israel. But the truth is spewing out day by day now. And um, like I say, you are the hidden ones, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Your nationality, your identity, your heritage was hidden from you because these heathenistic nations right here from 2 to 18, so-called white man, Chinese, Japanese, East Indians, Africans, these heathenistic nations took crafty counsel, thought of, thought of deceptive ways, thought of trickery and treacherous ways, cunning ways to segregate you from your biblical identity. To segregate you from your biblical names. Okay? To strip you from your history. Gave you false information. Misinformation. That's crap the council. They took it against the most high's people. And they consulted against the hidden ones. They also said in Psalms 83 and 4. They have said come and let us cut them off from being a nation. So these heathenistic nations said let's get together and cut these blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans off. From being a nation that the name of what? Israel may be no more remembers. And that's why some, half of you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans don't know you are descendants of Israel. Because crap the counts have been taken upon you. They have given you false slave names, bywords, proverbs, and haven't told you your nationality according to the Bible, man. So, that right there, that, that's killing someone spiritually and physically. And that's, and that's taking you right back to... Uh, uh, Revelation that's taking you right back to Revelation 11 and 7. They overcame you. That's how they. That's how the so-called white man, these other Gentile nations. That's how they overcame you by killing you spiritually and physically. But however, Revelation 11, 11 verse 8 highlights on spiritually. This is not physically right here. It says their dead body shall lie in the street of the great city. Revelation 11 and 8, when it says their dead bodies shall lie in the uh the street you're not physically dead you're not physically dead you're spiritually dead when you look at proverbs 21 and 16 let's look at proverbs 21 and 16. proverbs 21 and 16 says the man that wanders out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead so anytime that you're not knowledgeable you don't know your laws your heritage your language you don't know what you're supposed to be doing as an Israelite you are known basically as a dead man because you have wandered out the way of understanding and the so-called white man calls you to earth by giving you misinformation by not telling you who you are according to the Bible by teaching you false philosophies giving you a false white Jesus all right giving you false all these false religions he calls you to remain in the congregation of the dead so anytime that you don't have knowledge as an Israelite, you're dead. And that's why it says that in Revelation 11 8, they're dead bodies. Basically, this is talking about spiritually. Shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom in Egypt. America is known great for homosexuality. Okay. So, Sodom, homosexuality, lesbianism. And it's also known as a place of bondage. Egypt in Exodus 13.3 means the house of bondage. 
So America is basically known as a place of bondage, brothers and sisters. So it's known as Sodom, as homosexual, homosexuality, and it's known as a place of bondage because you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans was brought here to serve as slaves. You was brought here to serve the so-called white man. It says, where also our Lord was crucified. Because Yahweh wasn't physically crucified in America, but Yahweh was spiritually crucified in America. And the, and, the, and the way they done this, they crucified Yahweh spiritually by not giving you the legitimate image of the Messiah. They didn't give you the original true image according to the Bible of the Messiah. They gave you a false Christ. They gave you a false Messiah, which is none other than Cesare Borgir. The second son of Pope Alexander VI, they gave you that image and told you that Jesus basically uh, had blue eyes, blonde hair, and red skin. That's how they crucified the Most High spiritually. I hope you brothers and sisters were edified with this lesson. This is Brother Brendan Judah Matt Duffy, Solid Foundation International Ministries. Shalom.